I was looking at some of the insect zapping lamps on eBay and I came across this mic light, or is it mic light or mic light? But it says LED mosquito repellent bulb. And if you look at the listing, uh, it's a bit deceiving. It says anti-mosquito flying insects moth killer LED insect zappers. It doesn't kill them. It doesn't zap them. It just puts out this orange glow. And that's the reason I bought it. I knew fine well it wasn't going to zap them. It was very clear from the picture that it just puts out this sort of almost like a sodium yellow light. And um, that is a sort of wavelength that the insects theoretically don't get attracted to. So let's uh, test this out. The box is all in Chinese. It's got some very odd, it, you know, it says don't put the LED lamp at face height, don't put it on the ground pointing up, don't put it on a wall shelf, and it says don't put it a, you know, point away from the wall. And then it's, it's got the tick boxes and it shows exactly the same position, so I don't know what that actually means. Uh, fine from the ceiling, fine above head height. Very odd. I don't think it's designed to attract the insects. Uh, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't think, I don't know. Uh, here we have the Hoppy Power Analyzer. Let's plug the lamp in. There may be a bit of shimmer. No, it's not. It's, it's just swamped out. It looks yellow on the camera. And it looks, you know, to be fair, on the listing it looks yellow as well. I have a piece of material to indicate the actual colour. It's a bright fluorescent orange, like this sort of... This is the fabric used for industrial clothing, and it's, it's that bright fluorescent orange. And it's quite a nice colour. It's a very rich, warm orange. The current is 86 milliamps. Uh, power factor is a horrific 1, uh, 0.148. Uh, power is 3 watts. What was this supposed to be? This is supposed to be 9 watts. That is really ungenerous. The bastards. It's not even half. It's like a third. Honestly. But at least it's going to last for a long time. Um, and that's about it. Uh, well, let's take a look and actually, you know, let's pop the lid off while it's on. Is this a good idea? Comes off easy enough. Inside are, well, that's interesting, hold on. Inside are phosphor LEDs. What colour? Red? I'm guessing the outer ones, which are clear, are red. And the other ones are, hold on, I'm just going to plug that in again. They're a golden yellow. It is red, mainly red. Right, okay. They've used phosphor for the yellow because that is the most efficient way of producing yellow light with modern LEDs. The traditional gallium arsenide type LEDs are just terrible at producing yellow. It's one of the dullest colours. But by using the ultraviolet or blue chips behind the phosphor, they can produce a lot. Uh, there's a standard bridge rectifier. I'm just poking here. It might be fully charged. I'll find out when I poke the wrong bit. And we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 uh, red LEDs and three of the sort of yellow ones. And the combined, the yellow and the red gives that bright golden orange colour. Let's uh, go a little bit further. Very typical of the Chinese lamp construction in every way. The capacitor is going to be high value because uh, they aren't using the ship power factor uh, was because these are ordinary LEDs. Unlike the Poundland lamps where they have six chips per LED to make up a high voltage, which is the best way to use capacitive droppers, it's the most efficient way. It means you can use, if the higher the voltage across the LEDs, the lower the value of the capacitor you can use uh, because you can get a much higher visual output at a lower current because there are basically lots and lots of chips. You're, you're dealing with low current, high voltage, which is the main sort of feature of capacitive droppers. In this case, the capacitor has a value of 1.2 microfarad, which is lower than I was expecting. That is, however, very similar to the Poundland 6 watt LED lamp. It's a 400 volt capacitor. This electrolytic is 250 micro, 250 volts, 6.8 microfarad. That's the same as the Poundland 6 watt lamp. Both those component values. And the rest of this construction is absolutely typical of this type, type of lamp, except for the fact that it's got, instead of just having the outer ring of LEDs, it's got these extra ones. Um, so it's got the, uh, let's doodle this out. 
So let's uh, nudge this down. I'm going to tame this down a bit. Is it, uh, am I going to tame it down too far? I've probably tamed that down too far, haven't I? Hold on, I'm just going to nudge that back up a little bit. I can cheat that up by doing this. There are ways to cheat around everything. And let's nudge up just a tad. So we've got the mains come in and it goes to one end of the capacitor and one end of the bridge rectifier. This is just going to be a absolutely standard circuit, isn't it? Mains in one end of the capacitor, which will have a discharge resistor across it, which looks like that. Where's my little magnifier? 470k. So that's 1.2 microfarad. Now, 1.2 microfarad is a standard value. Do you remember when I was looking at the Poundland lamp, I uh, said 1.1 was an odd value. 1.2 is standard. Um, and that made me wonder if the 1.1 microfarad the Poundland lamp used was just a, a really high, sort of a higher resolution non-standard value just to allow to, them to tune the, the power rating. So that's 470k. Discharge resistor. That will be going then, after it's gone through the capacitor, it will go straight to the bridge rectifier, which it does. Lazy bridge rectifier, not a proper one like Electroboom would draw. Uh, the other end is going straight to the bridge rectifier. AC in, AC in, plus, minus. The output has the electrolytic capacitor straight across it. Okay, it has the electrolytic capacitor at 6.8 microfarad at 250 volt. That is kind of low in the sense that if LEDs go open circuit, the voltage across that will go up to about 330 volts. It may survive, it may not. What happens, uh, because I've tested that in the past with another light, was that the this capacitor limited the current enough that it didn't just go bang, it just, uh, just vented in a controlled manner. And it's got a 470k resistor across it as well, which is common again. Then it has, going from the capacitor's positive, oh, it's so stereotypical. It's got two resistors in parallel. That's it, those two big resistors there. Just to spread the load. And they are labelled 750, so that's 75, zero multiplier, so it's 75 ohms each, but there's two in parallel, so that's going to be 35, 36, about 37 ohms. Total. And after that, it's just the LEDs. It's just a classic capacitive dropper. As I say, not efficient because the combined voltage across the LEDs will be uh, 2 volts across the red LEDs, which there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12. It's going to be about 24 volts plus. There's going to be about 3 volts across each of these. It's going to be 9 volts. So that's going to be approximately 33 volts. And that's uh, most of the, the uh, power is being dropped across the capacitor. It just that's why it's got such a terrible power factor. Um, that's also why it was uh, using much higher current um, at that low voltage because it is just driving these LEDs a lot harder. It was about, was it about 80 milliamps? Let's plug it in again while it's just dangling out live. What's the worst could happen? Oh. Yeah, one day I'm going to bite it. Uh, about 86 milliamps going through those LEDs, which is quite a lot. It's quite nice. I like the colour. Uh, I'm just going to be careful to unscrew this completely before I uh, take it out. There we go. Um, yeah, it's... What, what do you expect? It is ultimately just a standard generic Chinese LED lamp, but just optimised for avoiding to attract the insects by operating a wavelength sort of that's prominent in the human spectrum because uh, if that's the if that's the red end of the spectrum that's the blue end of the spectrum we have a sort of response that goes like that with a peak in the sort of orangey yellow area uh, so it will be the highest brightness for us like sodium street lighting but to the insects are in this area it's going to look quite dark it's not going to be a bright color they're look, looking for the blue and ultraviolet area but it's quite nice i quite like that it's all right as a decorative lamp